те дава, че съм дърна ще едно там да те гадам дежи, то съм осън, че не е те там да те дам дидос. Па ден за и ламе тудам, орон съм ги меден дейсъм дам, те и мое, ден да гава да те те мурес. So uh, that uh, all the Buddhas of the three times and then the Thiruru deities uh, of all their qualities that which has been condensed within the one's glorious Guru and then uh, where one uh, mingled one's body, speech, mind with the Guru's body, speech, mind and then abiding in that nature, it is uh, always very important. So when, when with the, uh, that uh, inclination, devotion, and then according to that, uh, with the sense of uh, feeling of the devotion and subligate to the Guru, then uh, definitely one can receive the blessing within one's being. So, of course, in general, uh, all the Buddhas and deities uh, naturally have uh, equal uh, blessings and power and so forth, but uh, uh, it's because that uh, one have a special relationship with the Guru, so that is why that uh, there is the condition to receive the blessing in a faster way. So if we don't uh, supplicate uh, with the devotion, then uh, it is uh, not necessarily, you know, the one could receive the blessing. <coughs> so these days, of course, uh, there are lots of, you know, people who kind of, you know, just think that, oh, this uh, one uh, teacher is also a human being and uh, not uh, having sense of, you know, understanding then it is actually like, you know, deceiving oneself. So that is why it is better not to deceive oneself and then uh, from one's core of heart having that uh, devotion and inclination and then do that uh, supplication prayer. So in case uh, we don't have the devotion, then, uh, you know, there is no any other way that uh, the blessings can flow through uh, within one's self. <coughs> so, uh, of course, uh, at present, uh, that uh, where we are engaging into Dharma, especially during this uh, retreat time, you know, just uh, as much as we could concentrate into the Dharma practices, otherwise, you know, of course, uh, there is no much uh, time for oneself. And also, so, uh, as we have uh, somehow achieved this uh, precious human rebirth and then uh, thinking that uh, we don't have that opportunity to, you know, do the practice is kind of a kind of, you know, just a wrong uh, understanding. So, in case when we obtain this precious human rebirth and uh, still if we don't have leisure time or actual time for practice the Dharma, then uh, how about that in case if we are born in like a hell realm or hungry ghost being animal realm or demigod or god realms, of course that uh, there is no 
way that even one can uh, hear the dharmas and there will be no any time for them to do the practice. Really, then, Dilla, Chitrana, Chin, Dubiti, Kavitito, to say, Chevra, Chedi, Radiuris. So, within this support of human being, if we engage into Dharma practice, then there is the possibility one could to have certain accomplishment and it is the just uh, actual time for us to do the practice. Tata science may join us about this again. Hallelujah, you know, send a letter, cheer you out of a duty, she should have to send you know, there is no to do it, she's a carrier. So uh, at present, just uh, we uh, spend uh, so much time for this uh, present uh, livelihood, and then uh, if we kind of you know postpone our dharma practices, then there is no anything that uh, just be wasted uh, like that. <laughs> So of course, uh, in the past, all these uh, great uh, masters and uh, realized beings that uh, understanding that uh, the importance of the precious human rebirth and engaging into Dharma practice and uh, completely abandoning anything in, in relation with this present life. And because of that, and then they could have all this accomplishment and realization, and at the same time, those, you know, enlightenments. So we somehow just having so much attachment for this present life, you know, in relation with the foods and clothing and drinking and uh, working so hard and then uh, not having enough time for the Dhamma practice. And then at the end when death happens, then uh, based on the negative karmas, one may just, you know, fall into wonder in the three lower realms. <laughs> So when this happens and uh, and because of uh, certain negativities, if we are wandering in the through low realm, then uh, at that time, of course, you know, just we have nothing to really carry with the ourselves, including all this clothing or wealth or fame, you know, just uh, there is no way we can just uh, exchange or just share with the, you know, anybody. <laughs> so uh, that is why uh, that uh, if you have a consciousness or mind or more of a being conscious about uh, what that can be beneficial for oneself is that uh, you know just uh, having uh, that enough time to engage into Dharma practice that which can benefit you know forever. So that is just important. So in case when death happens to oneself and if there is any chance that uh, where one can carry all those you know wealth and material belongings everything together maybe of course you know just uh, it is good to accumulate more but uh, as we know that when death happens there is nothing that we can just really carry with us. So being, uh, having so much uh, attachment or grasping, clinging to all this kind of material wealth and so forth and then uh, not having enough time and then uh, at the same time 
uh, in relation with that, uh, there are so many possibility where it accumulate lots of you know negative karma that which one have to just bear in the next lifetime. In that way, uh, within this lifetime, as much as that uh, Dharma practice we could engage in, that which is, you know, always beneficial, and otherwise whatever kind of negative or just uh, the sins we accumulate, of course there is no benefit and there is more, you know, just suffering. In so as we engage, even engage into the Dharma practice, that also we need to have that uh, the right intention in relation with the caring for, uh, for the benefit of all sentient beings, and then we at the same time just uh, dedicating all those merit to all other beings. Uh, otherwise, even just we do some Dharma practice and uh, having, you know, kind of attachment and grasping and uh, that way just uh, whatever practice we do, still uh, that also does not really benefit that much. <laughs> So whatever uh, that Dharma practices and that each and every individual oneself could do, it is also important not to have, you know, that uh, grasping or clinging towards uh, it. And moreover, just uh, if one could do dedicate and do all this, you know, aspiration prayer, then that will be more beneficial. <laughs> So that is why uh, when we are engaging into Dharma practices, uh, it is important that uh, we should always examine our mind, that is uh, checking whether oneself is uh, doing the Dharma practice, you know, properly and uh, it is according to those, you know, instructions or not. Uh, otherwise, you know, just uh, uh, not necessarily one could to do a right practice. So, it is uh, better not to deceive, you know, oneself and then uh, uh, important to examine one's mind. So this uh, our mind, you know, just every single moment, how it is just, uh, you know, give rise to all sorts of thoughts. So not just let it go in that way and then uh, try to, you know, just be more careful working with the mind to engage into the Dharma practice.